You take the demise of black people and you use it just to benefit your pockets and you're willing to step on your own just to get one up. Black Lives Matter. Yeah, I mean, it sounds good. We're going to push your narrative, push your agenda, get donations, and I'm going to chill up in my $2 million mansion while niggas is really dying on the streets right now. Like the Black Lives Matter mural on Fifth Avenue vandalized twice in one day. On Fifth Avenue, as a woman identified by police as 29-year-old Bevelyn Beatty splatters black paint on the yellow letters of the Black Lives Matter mural. Yeah. They don't care! We killing each other left and right! They genuinely felt like they were using us once again. And at this time, while all the protesting was happening, we were dropping like flies on the street. Dropping like flies. My cousin had just gotten shot. He had been in a shootout um, in Staten Island. And so he had got shot. He ended up getting his leg amputated. So he was actually in the hospital when it happened. Um, me and Edmund had went to go and pray for him. And it was just, it boggled my mind. So wait a minute. All of this protesting is happening. Black Lives Matter is pushing all of this. But he just had a shootout. Black man against black man and it's silent. And it just, it pissed me off. There was a sense of righteous anger that came out of me because I know they are using us. They don't care about us and we're dying. While they're protesting and doing all this stuff in the name of Black Lives Matter, we the ones dying on the street. Cause while the cops are at the protest, the people in the hood still killing each other. Right. But now ain't no police to, to, to guard that. So, and you have Black Lives Matter's founders buying two million dollar Malibu mansions. It's like I'm not making this. I'm not making this up. Like nope. I don't want to be conspiracy minded. I don't want to feel profoundly alienated from the mainstream corporate press. But like that shit is happening. Like that yeah, is happening right now. Happening. And meanwhile, in Richmond, they're declaring homicide a public health emergency because on the most recent July Fourth, you had like 16 people get shot. You know. At the same time, Patrice Colors is buying a $2 million Malibu mansion. It's like, what am I supposed to think about that? It's, just, it's quiet now. BLM is quiet right now. It's quiet because people started asking questions where all the money went. Uh huh. Some of these like tech Silicon Valley dudes who just wrote, like kind of blindly wrote checks last summer started being like, where, so where did that money actually go? Like, what was it actually spent on? Was it spent mm. on like meme campaigns and mansions or? Like we're, and no one it didn't go to the black community. Apparently no one has any good answers. <laughs> of course they don't. It didn't go to the black communities. Absolutely not. Not a, not a, not a protester seen a dime. No, the protesters who were paid to protest saw a dime of that. But the black community who probably may have needed the money? No. You take the demise of black people and you use it just to benefit your pockets and you're willing to step on your own just to get one up so you can live peacefully while your people in the street are dying and you sleep peacefully at night, you don't even care. Black Lives Matter. Yeah, I mean, it sounds good. We're gonna put, push your narrative, push your agenda, get donations, and I'm gonna chill up in my $2 million mansion while niggas is really dying on the streets right now. And it doesn't even bother them, it don't phase them. Which were largely peaceful demonstrations, peaceful protests turned violent. Mostly peaceful protests, NYPD saying when night fell, the destruction began. In New York City, dozens of looters seen kicking in windows and breaking into stores across midtown Manhattan. So I move up here, still have a relationship with my dad or whatever like that. And at this point, you know, I'm selling drugs, I'm hanging out. So sometimes, I'm, you know, I get a hit a good lick of money, I'll spot him like 500 here or there or whatever. Um, we're just moving and shaking. And I mean, since I was 14, um, I've been working on my own from McDonald's and just work my way up and always hustling and have some type of something going because my mom really didn't uh, take care of us. Once, once we turned 16, we was on our own. Pay whatever clothes you get, you pay for whatever. As all she said, all our supplies, a roof over your head and food. You're on your own. At that stage, mm -hmm. what are you being told by your friends and family about how the fact that you're a black woman plays into where you are in the world. Listen, let me tell you something. This black woman song that everybody's singing now, this is new. This is new. Back, even if it was something that people talked about, it wasn't such a propaganda like it is now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Me being, I, for me, it never factored in, oh, I'm black, so I can't make it. You know what I'm saying? And I never, how can I say this? 
when I had issues not making it, it wasn't because I was black. It was because I was a criminal. It's called no. a spade a spade. Do you hear what I just said? Now, I'm going to be real. It had nothing to do with the fact that I was black, but it was because I was a criminal. I was moving criminally. You know what I'm saying? So you're, you, you, you can't expect blessings and, 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 and honest living and gifting when you're not moving right. The Bible speaks clearly on that. You're going you're to reap what you sow. So when I was living a criminal lifestyle, I had encounters with cops and issues based off of the wrong that I did. But I'm still just as black as I was back then. My mindset has changed. My sense of integrity has changed. The way I handle people has changed. The way I handle my, everything's changed. And now the doors have opened and it has nothing to do with black. Black was never a factor. And I, I, this is the part that irritates me. People have painted this picture that white people and black people go around and everything is race first and then. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Nine times out of ten, whether you like it a lot, not, it's character. You see somebody that's moving shady, it doesn't matter whether you black, Spanish, white, whatever they are. If they shady, you don't want to hang with them. Listen, I'm black, but guess what? Homie could be as black as me. He moving funny, I'm good. I don't want, mm -mm. I don't want, I'm chilling. I don't want to get robbed. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it has nothing to do with color. We've made everything about color to where we've forgotten about character. And in a sense, we're playing ourselves. How often are you the victim of racism? None. You see how racism hasn't became a factor at all? Let me tell you something. My great grandma was white. Okay. She was white. I got cousins in my family right now that are white. My cousin had just passed away, Tristina. She was half white and half Native American. She don't look no black. When I show people she was my cousin, they can't believe it, right? I have never in my life, if anything, the racism I seen was with my own family and how much they hate crackers. That's what they would say. You crackers, you crack it. And it would be the ones mixed up with the most white that hate white people for some reason. I have never in my life just experienced blatant racism or an opportunity that someone else got and I didn't get because I was black. I never experienced that. Like what were you being told about racism? Oh, what everything's you... harder for you because you're black. You know, you gotta, you know, you know, police gonna be on you and do this to you because you're black. Let me break it down like this. During the civil rights movement, fatherlessness was at 18%. 18% fatherlessness, okay? That's... I think 82%, right? That's 82% fathers in the household. Them fathers worked and they provided. They didn't have time to go running to this woman and that woman because they had a household they had to provide for. They had responsibilities. It's something about responsibilities that make you think you ain't got time for stupid stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That grid keeps you from doing stupid stuff because you just realize, I, I can't do that. I don't got time for that. You know what I'm saying? When the government came in, do Lyndon Bain Johnson, war on poverty, he said, okay, I'm going to get them niggas. I'm not going to give them too much, but I'm going to give them enough. Enough because they're uppity. They got a political backing now. They think they're cute. So I know how I'm going to get them. I'm going to give them war on poverty, subsidized checks but it ain't for free. You can get this check, but you can't be married. You can get this subsidized housing, but he, a man can't live here. They never, he never said you can't have sex outside of wedlock. He said, no, you just can't be married to get these funding. A man can't live in his household. So now women depended more on the government's checks rather than trusting in the structure of the man being the head of the household. So now she's still going to be horny. She's still going to want to have sex. But now he's not obligated to be responsible for that household because the government has obligations to the household. So he can just come, get his nuts off, and then go about his business. And so with that, it's brought a constant system of men who don't bother to stay in a household, right? And raise their children. They don't need to. The government's doing it for them. They don't have to be responsible. And once you have a man in this world with no responsibility, you are dealing with a weight and somewhat maybe even a monster because men weren't designed to be uh, uh, without responsibility. They weren't, they're leaders. They were natural born leaders. God made Adam first. 
So what do you do with the natural born leader that's in a place where there's no leadership for him to have? What is he going to do? Everything he ain't supposed to do. If we can just be pacified into hearing Black Lives Matter, we'll never have to worry about doing stuff to actually make our Black Lives Matter. We commit 55% of the crime, violent, murderous crimes in this nation, and we're only 12% of the community. That's a problem. And, but there's a way in which the absolute refusal or rendering that, what you just said, like toxic or cancelable or worthy of being deplatformed, is itself like profound, it is itself profoundly racist because the reason they don't want you to talk about those. Because that doesn't fit their narrative. And it's also because you're not allowed to say that a black person could be morally responsible for something. That's right. Listen, who gonna stop me? No one's gonna stop me. I'm gonna say what I feel, and if you don't like it, go kick rocks. And if you agree, be bold, bold enough to stand and state your opinion, and let me not stand on my own. But that's on you to decide. But at the end of the day, reality is reality. It doesn't matter whether you're white, no matter what. You were black, I would say the same thing. So now what, because you're white, I can't say it because you're white? I'm not doing that. They on their own with that. <laughs> That's definitely going to be the end. <laughs> yeah.